Welcome to Figure Feedback. My name is Jeremy. Today, we're going to be going over the menu options that's available on the Flash Forge Adventurer 5M. I'm going to be going through each and every one of these options that you see here on the 4.3 inch color display and let you know what each of these button presses are going to do and the different options that are available to you. So when you turn on your machine, it is going to take you to this home screen right here and you see that there's a few different options that we have on the left and on the right. For now, we're just going to start over on the right side of the screen. See this first option here that shows you the temperature of your nozzle. Currently, it's 17 degrees Celsius, but you can change that if you want. By default, it's at 200 degrees Celsius. You can change it to whatever you want and you can just hit OK. And then at that point, the machine is starting to heat up to that amount that you specify. And it heats up pretty quickly. You see that we are already at 63 degrees Celsius, but we're just gonna back that back down and let's just say 20. And it's just gonna cool itself right back off. Now you can do the same thing with the bed temperature here. It's at 17 degrees Celsius, but you can just click on that and then you can change the bed temperature to be whatever you would like for it to be, but we're not gonna heat up the bed. You already know that it works and the nozzle is starting to cool down. And then lastly, at the bottom here, this option is gonna give you some information about the printer. So this gives you your printer info, such as the model, the build plate size, the firmware that you're running, the serial number, the amount of hours that you have printed on it, the amount of filament that you run through, that you have ran through it, the available RAM, as well as the IP address that's gonna pop up there, and the MAC ad address is gonna pop up there as well. So that just gives you some nice information about your printer should you ever need it. Now, since we know what the things on the right side do, now let's take a look at the options on the left side of the menu. Starting with the home button, it just takes you home. So if you're already home and you touch it, nothing's going to happen. So let's go down to the second option. Now this option here is basically your print menu and is going to show you all of the models that you have stored either internally on the printer or on the USB stick if you have a USB stick inserted inside of it. There's no USB stick in here. So if I go to the USB stick option right there, you see that there is nothing there. But if I had my USB stick in there and it had sliced files on it, it would show up here. But these are all the files that are stored on the printer and you can just click the down arrow to go through them all and it's all separated by page the touch screen is not as responsive or easy to use like your cell phone would be sometimes you have to tap it in just the right spot in order to get it to operate but you know it is smooth so you see that these are the models that I have here stored locally and then if you go over to the A to Z filtering option, you can click that and it's going to uh, categorize it in alphabetical order according to how you listed them and how you decided to name them. And we can start either at the end of the alphabet, in this case it's going to be W for Warhammer, or if I wanted to start at the top, then it's going to do that. So we have numbers first, and then we have A for arms, B for battery, B for bed, you know, that kind of thing. Next, we can go over to this option that looks like a little clock. And then when you go over to this option here, it's going to show you the history of the things that you've printed. So this box right here is the last thing that I printed on this printer. And then here are the other things that I printed on here as well. And you can just scroll through the list. You tap it in the right spot. There you go and scroll through the list and see the different things that you've printed there. And then the pencil icon, you can tap on that. And then you can either select each of these individually and you can choose to delete them off of the memory or you can copy them if you want. Or you can hit this uh, icon, the very first one right here, and it's gonna select everything that's on that page. So yeah, that's everything that's inside of the print menu. Now, let's go down to the third menu option here. 
And this is the filament change option. Now I did a video about this previously showing you how to do a filament swap on this printer. If you want to see that, check the card I'm going to put on the screen above or you can check the link in the description. You'll be able to see that there as well. But this first option here is going to be for loading the filament into the printer, assuming that you don't already have any filament inside of it. The second option here is for swapping the filament. It gives you instructions on how to do that. And like I said, you can check out the video that I made to show you exactly what you need to do. You can just tap this button here that says PLA and you can choose from a different type of material from uh, PETG, ABS, PETG CF, PLA CF, or you can just set a custom temperature if you like. And then the last option here is just tips. It's going to give you some tips for using your nozzle. You can look over that if you like, and you can choose to follow those, um, that guidance or not. But they do suggest some things that most people don't do, such as having a, a separate nozzle for um, composite fiber filaments or PETG printing. Most people don't do that, but they're just telling you what they, um, what they feel are recommendations that you should follow. All right, so now the fan is now off. Everything is cooled down, but that is the third menu option for swapping your filament. And remember, even from this first option, when you just want to load filament, you have the same ability to tap PLA and choose from the different types of filaments that you can use or set a custom temperature as well, all the way up to 280 degrees Celsius, if that's what you would like to do. All right, so we're gonna cancel that and we're gonna move on to the settings menu, this little gear icon. So we're gonna click on that. And from here, the first thing that we are gonna be able to do is move the bed around and we can also move the print head around. So in order to do that first, we have to set it to home. So I'm gonna press this zero button here. The bed has just moved up and down and you see that the print head is move has moved left to right it's going to just home itself and then from here we can just move everything so if i wanted to move the print head for example in increments of let's say 50 millimeters here i can just say move left and it's going to move left can you see that let me do it again all right so you can you can see it moving back there it's a little bit out of focus i'm gonna move it to the left one more time all right so you can do that or if you press this up and down, it's going to move it closer to us. So let me push it again. It's moving closer. And then if I want to move it back, I can just press this button here and it's going to move it back. Same thing with the print platform. You can't see the print platform, but if I tap up right here for the bed, now the bed is moving up. Press it again, it moves up again, and you can do it 10, 50, 100 millimeters each. And if you, that's if you wanted to move it, and then you can lock it there if you wanted to lock it there. Next up is going to be the Wi-Fi menu, because you do have the option to print over Wi-Fi if you like. Currently, only using the Flash Print slicer software that is provided by FlashForge. But if you go over here, it's going to pull up all of the Wi-Fi connections that it can detect in your immediate vicinity. And then you also have an option on the left for Ethernet. You can turn the Ethernet connectivity on and off. There is a hotspot option here and you'll be able to turn on the hotspot as well. Or if you want to set up a static IP, if you know how to do that kind of stuff, then you can also do it right here from this menu as well. The next option looks like a cloud. We click on that and this is where you can sign in to two different types of cloud services. The first is going to be Flash Cloud and that is the uh, service that Flash 4 provides for cloud based printing. So you can turn that on and turn that off. You do have the register with them and it'll just basically allow you to print things uh, from the cloud connected to your printer. I don't have that set up. I'm a little bit iffy right now when it comes to 3D printing companies and their cloud-based software. There's been some weird things that have happened in the past, such as with Bamboo Lab and some printers just 
turning on and being able to print all by themselves without anybody's knowledge. Some issues with Creality and their users being able to access other people's cameras and other people's printers and controlling them as well. There's some weird stuff going on with the cloud, so I am currently not going to use it, but you can sign into Flash Cloud. And then down here, there's another service that they give you the option to connect to, and it is called Polar Cloud. Polar Cloud is free to an extent. Then there's also a couple of paid options as well, and it just gives you that same kind of functionality, such as uh, being able to slice in the cloud, sending your sliced files over to this printer from the cloud if that's something that you would like to do. But you have to make that call. You can turn it on, enter your account information in a pin, and you're off to the races. And now the last option over here is just for calibration. When you first set up this printer, it's going to run through the calibration for you for leveling and the vibration tests. But if for any reason you want to run those tests again, you can do it right there from this menu instead. All right, so let's go back home. The last and final option is going to be this exclamation point down at the bottom. And this is going to give you your machine info, give you the name of your machine. This is the Adventurer 5M. We can call it something else if we want, but I'm not going to call it anything else. Um, you can update your firmware right here if that's what you would like to do. It's now checking for new firmware. I don't think that there's any available. Nope, we're running on the latest firmware. Um, we have an option for copying logs. You can choose the language, reset it to its factory settings, or look at the licensing information. The next option over here is sound. Now, this is really important. You know, when you turn on this printer, it makes this loud and frankly annoying jingle every time you turn it on but you can turn that jingle off if you untoggle this sound option here you see that i have it off so make sure that you do that if you don't want to hear that dun 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 dun, dun every time you turn on the printer the next one is going to be for filament detect i would turn that on so that it can activate the filament detection sensor so in case you run out of filament while you're printing it's going to detect it and it's going to pause it for you that way your print won't be ruined and you'll have to start over and over here is just some um, other information for a website they say this is where you go to the flash forge website the next one is going to be for after sale support. They tell you who you can email for after sale support. And last but not least, the maintenance guide. And that tells you here when you should use vibration compensation, such as when you haven't used it for a long time, when you see visible ringing or ghosting or your prints, or after adjusting the tension on the synchronous belt, you can go next. And this is basically just giving you tips of what you should do if something were to happen, when to perform leveling and calibration. So that, those are the two maintenance tips that you get. And then you can close that out and we'll just go back home. So that is it. Those are all of the options that's available on the Flash Forge Adventure 5M from its menu system. And it's not very difficult to understand at all. So that's going to do it for now. If you got any questions about the different things that you can access from these settings or if you found something that I have not covered in this video, please feel free to leave it in, down in the description so that we can all be informed and become a little bit more educated about how to operate this machine. And if you want to see more videos about the Flash Forge Adventure 5M, be sure to subscribe to this channel because I'm making more videos about this printer to try to get the word out about it because I think that it is fantastic value for the money currently at $299. And I think more people should know about it because it doesn't get a lot of attention. So thank you all so much for watching. Till next time, take care of yourselves and I'll speak to you soon.